For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to read to you out of the book of Job, chapter 20. Some of you might pronounce it as Job. You'll probably run away. But Job. Then answered so far the Namanite and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer. And for this I make haste and have heard the check of my reproach and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Now I hold the spirit of understanding by the Holy Spirit of his word to speak to you that Jesus saved and only Jesus saved. Knowest thou that this old this man was placed upon the earth. Man did not evolve. Man was created by God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. You can't go to glory and go to God when you deny him as the creator. That the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but a moment. Death is coming. You will die 70, 80 years old, that's very little time. This time of man's been about 6,000 years. Even living to 100 years old is not very long. It's short. But for the wages of sin is death. You will die. Your time will be short upon this earth. And yet, your eternity will be forever. Your eternity will live without no time. You're going to die in this present earth, this present time, and your eyes will wake up somewhere after death, because the Bible says there is life after death. Now, you're either going to be with God in heaven, by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, God, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That will get you to heaven. For only Jesus saves. If you reject and do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will die on this planet, and you will wake up in the lake of fire which burneth forever for rebelling against God and His Word. Upon death you will open your eyes in hell, or be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. It's your choice that God's given you. That the fact is, we sit here and tell you, as God has prescribed to us, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Life is short. You're not guaranteed years you may not even see this afternoon. It's a point unto man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. The time for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ may be right now. You may not have an afternoon. I don't know. You don't know. And since we don't know, your time to choose Christ is... And not believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and if you were to die, you will burn in the flames of hell forever. Whereas believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you'll be forever with the one that created you. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reached unto the clouds, 
You may become a big CEO. You may have the brightest and biggest thoughts. You may be somebody of importance. You may have letters after your name. You may have titles given to you. You may have certificates. You may have all kinds of grandeur of the world. Yet you're still going to die. And you're going to face God in judgment, saved or lost. It's a point unto man once to die, and after this, judgment. Yes, even as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I will be judged of my works. Not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be judged a sinner condemned John chapter 3 yet he shall perish forever like his own dung isn't the Bible so great your earthly body will disappear like doo doo you'll decompose like manure What God thinks of your wonderful, beautiful body, handsome, he looks upon it as human refuse. That's why men don't want to read the Bible. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? And that's the question. Where will you be? When you die, and your people will wonder, your friends, your workers, your family, I wonder where he is. He must be in a better, brighter place. He must be R.I.P. Let me tell you, you will not be rested in peace without Jesus Christ. You'll be in torments, being tormented in tormenting. Forever. Someone dies without Jesus Christ, R.I.P. is a lie. It's wishful thinking. He shall fly away as a dream. Unforgotten. Forgotten. Long gone. Quick. He shall not be found. Death, that's it. As far as the earth is concerned, death, you're done. No more. And yet the Bible says there is an afterlife. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which see him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. Listen, it's a proven fact, death. You were born to die. You were created to give God glory. You were created to give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Refusing, rejecting. You will face the wrath of God, John chapter 3. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Now notice what John the Baptist said. There is life after death. He that hath the Son hath life, even though you've died. Death does not end your living. Death just moves you to another location. And you cannot take a U-Haul. You cannot call the movers. It is just you 
your soul, and later your body. But that eternal soul that will depart from your body upon death will go somewhere. And there are no virgins. There is no soul sleep. There's no purgatory. It is to be absent from the body present with the Lord or to be waking up in hell. That's it. And to get the glory, to get to God, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And what we're reading out of Job today is your life is short. You need to act upon Christ now because you don't know when death will come knocking. There are plenty of people that never woke up this morning and had plans to do things today. There are people that had to-do lists and they never woke up to do what their list says for them to do. They have woken up to be with God or they have woken up to be in hell. And those that woke up after death in heaven believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and became born again. Those that woke up in hell rejected Jesus Christ, rejected God's love gift, rejected the gift, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life, the eternal life after death, the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have death, or you can have the gift of God. But life is short. Life is quick. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. He's never gotten saved. April 1987, when I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, all the sins from April 27th back to being a newborn baby, all my sins have been put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I was cleansed of all my youthful sins. You cannot stand before God in your sins, for God is holy, and God tells us, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And you can't be holy in your sins. You got to be cleansed. And cleansing is not by cash, check, or money order. Cleansing by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cleansing is not by church membership. Cleansing is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Catholics in heaven. There are Bible-believing, born-again Christians in heaven. Works will not get you into heaven. Only by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. If your sins are not washed in the blood, you will die in your sins. And you will be rejected by the God that created you and made you for His pleasure and for His glory. But he will allow no vile, no sinners in his presence. And yet he's provided us 
But we have a terminal condition called sin. And God has given us the prescription, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. No Lamb, no Lamb of God, no salvation. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There's nothing in there about being good. Oh, I'm good. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. You are not good in the eyes of the Lord. Even a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I'm not good. The righteousness that I have today is Jesus Christ's righteousness and not of my own. The only good I am is the good of Jesus Christ and not Stanley Hayward. I am a saved sinner. I'm saved and I'm still prone to sin. But I am washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. You've got to be cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is a bloody atonement by God's Son. It's not by membership, it's not by works, it's not by money. It's by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. You will die in your sins and you will go to hell. This verse will not be applied to any born again Christian. Because they are under the blood. If there's one thing God cannot do, God cannot remember my sins under the blood. Now, as a Christian, a born-again Christian, if I sin and do not confess and put those sins under the blood, they will be rendered, they will be judged. I'm still saved by the blood, but i still got sin on my record. But I have been born again of the Spirit. See, your first birth is wrong. Your first birth was born of Adam. Adam sinned. And that sin has been progressed to his children, to his great-grandchildren, to his great-grandchildren, all the way to you. We are all brothers and sisters by Adam. And the fact is, the wages of sin is death. And as Adam died, I'm going to die. And so will you, and we don't know when. Now, we would like to think our church can save us. We would like to think that when we get before God, we're going to whip the wallet out and say, God, i got some 20s. We like to say, well, God, I'm a good person. Oh, God, I... I Obey the Ten Commandments and I can't name one. And God will say, where's the blood? Where's the blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world? Where's that blood? No blood, no mercy. No gospel, no grace. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, thou shalt spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth. Yet his meat is his bowels, his turn it, 
is the gall of ash within him. He shall swallow down wretches. He shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Make all you want to make. And upon death you won't take. And at death, you'll be all that you ever was. Nothing. Life is short. And everything that you do in this world does not go with you in death. Your family don't go. Your money don't go. Your job. buried in that car in the graveyard, it still will not go with you. Get buried in a mausoleum, you're still dead. You'll still rot. And you'll still face God. In the short life that we have, that we don't know when, you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You are to believe on the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is your salvation. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. That name is not Mary. That name is not Allah. That name is not even your name. It is the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? Do you have assurance of where you will go when you die and what you're trusting? And yet the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know, no doubt. If I were to take my last breath right now, I'd be with the Lord Jesus. I'd be with God. Now, the way of death, that's a different story. I would not want to suffer death. I would not want to drown. I would not want to burn. I would not want to die in agony. And that's possible. I could have right now the clean religion of Islam come over here and torture me to death for being a Christian and preaching the gospel. And they're doing it. I could be tortured for days, for months. But upon my final death, I will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless that Muslim believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll wake up in hell. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll wake up in hell with that Muslim, with that Baptist, and maybe Muhammad Ali, the Muslim. See, Allah never died for your sake. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood that you may be redeemed and brought back to God. Allah wants blood. Allah wants his followers to go kill people. My God died for you and doesn't want any of us to take any life. That's the, that's the difference. 
Catholics have killed born-again Bible-believing Christians for over this Bible over all centuries. See, religion kills. Religion sheds blood. Religion murders. Jesus Christ gave up his life that we may have life more abundant. The only blood that God will take is the blood of his son, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That's the entrance into glory. That's the ticket to heaven. The precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God. Without spot. Without sin. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. We have a scriptural salvation. Not written in stone, but the chief cornerstone, the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. You will die. Beware, you might take that nap and never wake up. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You and that flesh will not live forever. Go ask the doctors. They'll tell you, you will die. And if you die in your sins, you will wake up in hell. If you die in Jesus Christ, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. John chapter 3. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Salvation, the get out of hell, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. What is the wrath of God? Wrath of God. Revelation. Everybody likes Revelation. Revelation. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the wrath of God. That is the same God. God is love. That is the same God that God is holy. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That is a lie. Because if you still are a sinner, God will chuck you into the lake of fire for rejecting His Son. You reject Jesus Christ, God Almighty will pull you into hell for rejecting what He's done for you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Reject that. And you'll die and end up in hell. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, whosoever believes on Jesus shall have everlasting life. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
You can ever you can either believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, or you can be chucked into the lake of fire for rebelling at what God has said. You can go to heaven by Jesus Christ, or you can go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. You say, why do you come week after week after week after week? Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scripture. He was buried. He arose again the third day according to the scriptures. We are told to come to you and preach that gospel. Number one, the gospel is to be preached to you. What you do with it, that's between you and God. I've done my job. Number two, many of you will never set foot in a church. So we bring the church to you. We are so loving and kind, we bring church to you on a Saturday morning. So somebody asks you, have you been to church? Oh yeah, it came to me Saturday morning. Some loud mouth idiot preaching came, ruined my watermelon, ruined my flowers, ruined my bagels. But you are in church. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. You're in church right now. I've been tempted to bring a hymn and start singing. But I don't charge you. I don't take an offering. I don't have a place. I do this for the Lord. I do it for you. You ought to be thankful I am concerned about your soul. Mr. Bongo Man is not concerned about your soul. He's trying to disrupt the Word of God so you may not hear what God wants from your life. And he'll be judged wrong. Unless he repents and gets right. These people want you to conduct their business and give you their money. They don't want you to hear the gospel. You ought to right now stop all commerce, come out here and say, we want to hear the Bible. Yeah, right. He's despised and rejected of men. Isaiah 53. You make the Bible living. You make the Bible true. Now, number three, why do we come out? I go to church, and your penny waste church will not preach blood or hell. You may even have the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus in your church. That's not Bible. That's a penny waste, worldly, God-forsaken church. And it can be a Baptist church, too. They're just as worse, because they ought to know better. And I've been in most of them down here in Daytona. They're God-forsaken churches because they've God-forsaken the Bible. They've God-forsaken Jesus Christ. They've given up the blood for all other means of junk. If those churches are so good, where are they? I've been down Daytona Beach since 2012. The only ones that come knocking on my doors are Jehovah's Witnesses. You hear that, Baptist? Hey, Baptist, the Jehovah's Witnesses come marching on my door, not you. That's why we come down here and preach the gospel. No one else will, even though the Bible says, go in all the world and preach. So number one, the Bible tells us to come here and tell you about the gospel. Number two, you're not going to go to church. Number three, the church you're going to is probably polluted. You want to know what the Bible says about your church today? I'll read out of the Bible. 
I will quote from Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. You can't find Hebrew in the New Testament. What an idiot. Revelation 3.14, today's church. Now to the church of the Laodiceans. You know what Laodicean means? Of the people, for the people, by the people. The church of I got right. The church, you offend me. The church, shut up, I don't want to hear it. The, the church, keep it in the church house. I hope I offend you to believe on Jesus. These things say the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Oh, this church is written to the Creator, by the Creator. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. You know what God says there? He'll vomit you. See, you walk down the middle of the road, Christianity. You're not on fire, and you're not cold. You do something in the Lord, and then you do something worldly. You do something worldly, and then you do something for Christ. Now you got something worldly and for Christ. Now you got something for Christ and something worldly. So what you got, you got a worldly Christianity, and God says, that makes me sick. You got a Christianity worldly, and that makes God sick. That's what it says. Because thou sayest, I'm rich. Increase with goods. Have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. That's a good thing to say about a group of people. Hey, you're wretched. Revelation 3? No part of it, young lady. Revelation 3, 17. Having no part in Jesus, you'll have your part to burn it forever in the lake of fire. Because you're wretched. You're a sinner. And miserable. Why are legal and illegal drugs and alcohol on the rise? Because you're miserable. And this is talking to Christians. I'm not talking to unsaved people. I'm talking to you Christians. I'm talking to you Christians that make God sick. You're miserable. That's not a fruit of the Spirit. And poor. And blind. Some of you Christians don't even know what we're doing and can't even find what we're doing in the Bible. And we can. Some of you Christians will call up here, well, I'm a Christian too, and that's not how you do it. What do you do? We go to movie night. We have bingo. We have a bazaar. We have cookies. We live, Jesus. We let our light shine. We have batteries dead. Take the batteries out and put the Bible in your life. Then have the light of Jesus Christ. Because if you're a worldly Christian, the Bible says you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. Ooh. The world will love that. You know, you, you got churches today with nakedness. But look what it says here. Behold, I, Jesus Christ, stand at the door and knock. At a church. Jesus is standing at the door knocking at the church. He's not inside. Some of your churches, Jesus Christ is standing outside. He's not inside. I said, 
stand at the door, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Christian, so called, I put that in quotes. Jesus Christ is standing outside your life saying, Come on, let me in, will you? You may think you're a Christian, but are you a biblical Christian being born again by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? And don't tell me I just said this prayer. That's another lie out of hell. You've got to believe on the Lord. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Where do you find church money? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Where do you find being a good person? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto Jesus Christ. Salvation. When you walk up here and say, well, I don't think that's right, you're not making a proper confession. The proper confession is Jesus is Savior, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by Jesus. That's the response. It has nothing to do with your light, because it's not you the light, it's Jesus Christ the light. And it says about salvation, with the heart man bleeds unto salvation, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then you read further, it says, how shall they know except God sends a preacher? How you doing? I am God called by Romans chapter 10 and Mark, and Mark chapter 16 to be here. What would Jesus do? Uh, he preached on a boat to a bunch of people who didn't believe? Uh-oh. The Apostle Paul stood on Mars Hill as a small G-O-D and preached to the people? See, what we're doing is in the footprints of Jesus and the Apostles. George Whitfield. It's a shame that Christians don't know that name. Because if you read about George Whitfield, you wouldn't say I was loud. Go ask Benjamin Franklin about George Whitfield's preaching. If I'm going to raise my voice, I'm going to raise it for Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone that only Jesus saves. I'm not going to raise it for no stupid ball club. I'm going to raise it for Jesus Christ. And then when you stand before God one day at the great white throne judgment, I never knew. Well, guess who God's going to call? They're called a loudmouth preacher saying, come up here. What would you tell those people? I told them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they shall be saved, Lord. All right, sit down. And at that time, you wish you didn't listen to my big mouth. It'd be too late. You wish you would have believed. I pray you believe. I pray that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But all I 
can do is tell you the gospel. Believing is your part. Or disbelieving is your part. You will stand before God one day. You will stand either saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, or you will stand lost and being cast into the lake of fire which burneth forever. That is the wrath of God. Because you will not believe on Jesus. You rather live in your own sin. You rather try to reject. You rather think religion will do it. You rather think you're too good. You rather say, oh, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You can go with all excuses you want, but God will not take excuses. God takes blood. Now let me reevaluate that a little bit more. God takes the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin. That's it. When you die, die with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is cleansing your soul. That's the way to die. And since you don't know when you're going to die, do it now. One of these idiot four drivers may come on the sidewalk and knock you dead right now. Oh God, I was going to do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. There is never a tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Because tomorrow becomes today. Today is not tomorrow, but it was yesterday's tomorrow. And you're not guaranteed today. We read in the book of Job, life is short. You have a birth date, but you do not know when your death date. Now is the time of salvation. There is no then, it's now. God has made, has sent us here with preaching and with gospel tracts and with signs because you may not finish out Saturday. Maybe I'm speaking to somebody today, they'll never see a Sunday again. They'll close their eyes somewhere in eternity. And they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll wake up with Jesus Christ. And if you reject Jesus Christ, you'll wake up in torment. In a place where God has never wanted to put man. Jesus said that hell was made for Satan and his angels. But since we follow Satan and sin, it's our choice. It was our being to be placed in the hell. And God says, For I so loved the world, that I gave my only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's totally it. And then you grow from there. But right now, settle your account of your eternal life. Now. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, come as a sinner. Repenting. Come to the Savior.
Caesar, the Lord Jesus Christ, and be saved now. Most of you, according to the Bible, will continue the broad way. Some of you, when you come to the great white throne judgment, you're going to wish I could go back and listen to him. But you won't. You can't. Many of you are going to be just so hard, you're just not even going to care anyway. But hopefully there's a few here that will go the way of the straight gate. I know I'm not preaching to the majority here. But you've heard the word. The few. Someone here needs to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. All of you need to do it, but Many will go the broad way. Some few people here. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There may be someone here who's saved. They know the Lord. And they're looking at us like, wow, that is just totally weird. And if you were to open your Bible and read, you'll find what we're doing is in the Bible. And the Bible says in Revelation, come out amongst the world. Come out. Come out, Christian. I will offer my services to you for you to learn the Bible nightly or when you can. Come on out, Christian. I know it's scared. I know it's frightening. But step on out now. Take a stand. And we're not going to have you next Saturday come out here and preach unless you want to try. We'll just walk you through the Word of God nice and slow, baby steps. Or if you're walking, we'll teach you how to run. You might be an aged Christian like Paul. We'll help you around. Maybe you can't find a good church. Come out. Step out. Hey, I'm afraid. I don't... We'll encourage you. You encourage us by stepping out. You want to make my day? There's two ways for you to make my day right now. A lost sinner step out and receive Christ as your Savior. You'll make my week. Or you're a saved Christian. You know what? You step out and say, I want to start serving the Lord. I want to do something. I want to learn. That would make my day. That would make my day Monday night if you start coming out to hear the Bible. Or Tuesday night. Or Wednesday night. Or Friday night. Or Saturday. That first step is the hardest step. Whether to come to Christ as your Savior or come to Christ and serve Him. That first step of faith is a doozy. But the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, come out amongst them. God is not going to come over there and pick you up and glide you over here. If God went over there and picked you up and glide you over here, we are in the twilight zone and not the earthly zone.
Because God don't do that. God may be working on your heart right now say, get up and go to that guy. Come. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The Bible says in Isaiah 1, come. I'm not going to come to you. you got to come to God. Don't wait for me to come over there and play duck, duck, goose with you. I'm not going to do that. You got to step out. Well, Jesus went up to Peter and Peter... F I, uh, Jesus knew Peter. Jesus knows all people. I don't. I don't know who's saved or not. I don't know who's serving or not. I have no idea. Jesus did. I got to rely on you coming out. I'm the first step is the hardest. Well, when you take that first step, God will come down from heaven. He'll stop feeding the whales. He'll come down to meet you. You take that step out right now, God will beat you here. I know that for a fact. There's some of you here. I'm going to get some watermelon, tomatoes. You never thought you'd get the gospel. There's some of you here. You, you're going to do your business. Oh, when's that idiot going to show up? And I, You know what? Go ahead and call me names. The Bible says, scorners, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Go ahead. That don't bother me. You encourage me more. You want me to go to a new place, stay in this place, you all get saved and I'll have to go somewhere else. So if you don't want me here preaching, you all get saved and I won't have to come here and preach no more. I have to go find somewhere else. But since you're all not getting saved, I'm going to come down here and give you the gospel as long as God's giving me breath and ability to do it, Lord willing. You're the ones that make me come week after week after week because you won't believe on Jesus. I want you to know what God has said. God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not... I blew that verse. ...shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. John 3.36 I make mistakes. I sin. You've heard his message. I'll, you know, I'll tell you, there's one thing on this world, two things on this world that'll last for you all eternity. Listen up. Man's soul, that will last for all eternity. Either heaven or hell. Your soul will live forever. You know who else will live forever? Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. You know, you'll never find a newspaper in heaven, but you'll find the Bible. The only book in heaven is the Bible. The very Bible that I've been reading to you all will be in glory.